Hello everyone and welcome to another Fire Carrier Guide. Today we're talking about our Japanese mini-series where we're going through each carrier uh, in turn talking about the setup and the kind of gameplay style that one would take into it. Uh, previously we've already covered the Hosho and today we're going to be covering the Zuiho. So without further ado let's get into our game. So this is the Zuiho. We're going to talk about uh, the uh, upgrades, modules on the ship, the captain setup, the exteriors that we might use, and we'll go into a random battle and showcase how we might use this aircraft carrier in a random battle. So without further ado, first things first, let's go into our uh, modules. The consumable upgrade uh, damage control party 2, that's entirely up to you if you want to spend the extra credits or premium or whatever you like on that. I personally only really feel that uh, Damage Control Party Mar 1 is enough because of the 30 second activation timer. Uh, under the upgrades, we uh, typically tip Air Groups Modification 1. Uh, that gives us the extra damage on our fighters, very important as we'll showcase later why. Uh, we also want to take the um, reduced chance of fire and flooding because as a carrier that's the last thing you want to be doing is being on fire. Uh, kind of prevents you from taking off and all the kind of uh, other elements along those lines. The third upgrade, which is new to the tier uh, 5 bracket, we're going to take air groups modification 2. This gives us extra fighter health and extra fighter ammunition. The ammunition really isn't that much of an issue here because we don't have the ability to strafe or exostrafe, but the extra fighter health is very important. So to keep um, up with when the enemy carrier is definitely going to be using fighter health, you need to have fighter health. Plus, with more fighter health, it means we can strain into enemy A a little bit more if we want to, and not necessarily lose a plane. In terms of upgrades, the flight control module comes 112, so one fighter, one torpedo bomber, two dive bombers. You want to upgrade that to 121. You want to get the two torpedo bombers, you want the ability to cross drop. Torpedo bomber is far more impactful, especially on auto drops, because tier 4 and 5 carriers cannot manual drop, or alt attack as it's called. So we want that second torpedo bomber. However, first things first, I recommend, if you have the free experience, getting the fighters. Tier 6 fighters, it increases the speed, it increases the health, it's very very potent. The torpedo bombers, well to be honest I would probably get the hull upgrade first to get the second torpedo bomber squadron and then I would upgrade the torpedo bomber itself to get uh, the tier 6 torpedo bomber. This is a tier 6 plane in a tier 5 ship. It is powerful, it can still only auto drop, there's a lot of health, there's a reasonable amount of speed, it's actually quite a good powerful thing to have. Now the hull, if I'm not mistaken, does get no it's still 30 units so you, you're not going to change from the number of uh, planes you have the hull can be done last you, you don't get extra in your plane capacity or anything like that so it's fine as far as the captain goes uh, first things first i always take aircraft servicing expert more health quicker times that planes are loaded uh, because we have two torpedo bomber waves i'm going to take torpedo acceleration this is like literally as Japanese almost always done uh, I feel it's the best way to catch specifically destroyers but or maneuverable cruisers you don't necessarily need the torpedo acceleration if you're only after battleships or uh, aircraft carriers but the point is the Japanese line is very flexible and you really want to be going after the smaller ships and I feel the skill in dropping from behind and from the side or doing a combination of cross dropping on targets is very powerful in the tier 5 Zuiho however um, we can only auto drop, which means if we drop on a target, we want our torpedoes to get there as quick as possible so he can't turn and dodge. As for the three point skill, as we mentioned in the whole show uh, guide, if this captain on the Zuiho is going to stay on the Zuiho, then I would recommend taking torpedo arm and expertise to load the torpedo bombers faster. However, if this captain is going to be a Hiryu Shikaku or usual captain, uh, you may consider not taking torpedo armor and expertise and taking basic fire training to boost up your self-defense, partly for counter snipes, but partly for just uh, having a strong kind of AA around your own ship that you can play in ranked and competitive uh, as and when it comes in the uh, 6, 7, 8 brackets. Uh, in this instance, I'm going to take torpedo armor and expertise. Uh, one thing to note, however, is that just like the whole show, we have very limited plane reserves. So if you are going to get your bombers load quickly and go out there, you need to be very selective in who you attack and when you attack because you don't want to lose all your planes instantly in like the first four minutes. So, uh, Air Supremacy is our four-point skill. This will now give us an extra fighter plane, but it'll also give us now an extra dive bomber. That's fine. Uh, it gives more odds for the dive bomber to hit, but even though it can only auto-attack. Uh, for the 11th point skill, uh, we take Dogfighting Expert. Now, 
on the Zuiho, this isn't necessarily going to give us a huge amount of benefits because our fighters are at tier 6. So the Zuiho um, has a tier 6, which means it won't have planes that are lower tier than it. You know, it'll always have the highest tier planes. So the dogfighting expert is only giving us more ammunition. This is more for the scale if you're, and even if you're mirror matched like, with like a 5 and a tier 6 carrier, the tier 6 carrier is only going to have tier 6 planes. No tier 6 carrier has tier 7 planes. I mean, the independents might have a tier 7 dive bomber, but I digress. You get my point here. When it comes to fighters, everything's going to be tier 6 or under. So the dogfighting expert is only going to be a slight benefit in terms of ammunition. If this captain zoo who is going to move on to further tiers, then the dogfighting expert is absolutely a must. But. If you're only going to have a Zuiho captain, this is the one time where dogfighting expert isn't actually super really important. You must take this. It's actually kind of like, nah, you can't stress. You don't really need the extra ammunition. You're not going to come across planes that are higher tier, so the dogfighting is really going to help your fighters. So it's kind of like, eh. But in this particular instance, I'm going to uh, take it uh, because I may use the captain on, like, for example, the Kaga. And if you have the premium ship, the Kaga, then using this captain on the Kaga, you'll definitely benefit from the Dogfighting Expert because the Kaga only has tier 6 fighters on a tier 7 ship and you will come across higher tier planes and fighters and all that type of sense. Uh, to go 19 point captains, well, the interestingly enough, the uh, Zuiho actually starts getting long range AA guns. So you can go into a sort of uh, AA build on this ship. So the concealment is only 8.9 kilometers with a camouflage. You don't need to take concealment expert. That will drop your concealment too low and uh, enemy destroyers can sneak up on you and by the time your ship detected you're like oh I can't do anything about it because I don't have enough time to react. So the concealment at 8.9 I feel is fine. You can take uh, manual fire control for AA armament. This will bump up the damage of your long range guns. You can also take advanced fire training. This will bump up the range to 6 kilometers. So you can have 6 kilometer uh, let's see, what's that, 344, assuming the, the signal, which we'll have a look in a minute, it can bump it up, and in the tier 5 bracket, that's quite powerful. If anything comes near you and wants to try and attack you, you can modically self-defend yourself. You could also drop the torpedo armament expertise, take the basic fire training, match that with advanced fire training and manual fire control for AA armament, and you've got the exact same captain for the usual here in Shikaki, which we'll show in future videos. And this means that your torpedo bombers will load slightly slower by 20%, but ultimately you're going to be a very difficult ship to snipe and you'll have good resilience against anyone that flies within six kilometers of your ship which is pretty good range <clears throat> so anyway that's our captain spec uh, now if we go to uh, exteriors uh, pick yourself your whatever camouflage you can afford I like to get you know some hundred XP ones if you've got captain ones you're leveling up do that as well under signals be, you do have sources of fire and flooding in this particular scenario I Feel like I don't really need the extra fire for the dive bomber. I'm gonna go with uh, speed. I'm gonna push my, the speed of my ship from 28 to 29.4 knots. Uh, and then this is your standard kind of combat setup. You've got your AA signal, you've got your uh, speed signal, Sierra Mike, and you've got your extra flooding and then flooding and fire signals. So this is how you would take it, for example, into a ranked or competitive game. You can, however, drop the speed. You could theoretically drop the AA and you could take two economic signals. You could drop uh, one of the fire and flooding uh, signals as well, so just keeping the single 15% flooding uh, signal. And then you could pick three economic signals uh, and specials. So, you know, ship, captain, uh, you know, ship or captain experience. Assuming you're leveling up and you want to get through it as quick as possible, which if you're not free experiencing through the whole show or the zoo, you go to the Ryuzo, then I highly recommend you take as much experience as you possibly can just to get through this because. Um, Personally, I don't find the whole show of the Zoya that enjoyable because you cannot alt attack. Under flags, uh, just pick your favorite external flags if you have them. Cool, and uh, let's go into a random battle. Now, things we can come across. The enemy Borg is going to have stronger fire. It's a one-on-one, -on -one. the Borg will just have the stronger fighter. It'll even be a tier 5 fighter, which means the enemy Borg will get the benefit of dogfighting experience, which means it will totally wreck our fighter. So our benefit is the speed of our fighter and the tankiness to fly into of AA. If you're against a tier 6, well then the tier 6 is definitely still going to win anyway, uh, because he's bigger and tankier. And um, and then there's match. If it's under-tiered, then you still have the higher tier fire, so you need to be selected. Plus you've only got two fire waves. Now, in this particular game, 
just like our uh, tier 4 game, we are the only Japanese carry in a double carry game. So we've got bogs all round, two bogs on the enemy team, one on our team. The enemy fighters will be more powerful than us, but he has extremely limited playing capacity, that being the bogs. Uh, they don't have spare for anything. So if we can somehow lure his fighter over any form of AA on our team, which we're not looking at, we see the New Yorks are kind of eh, Wyoming's kind of eh. Uh, so, you know, we want to lure over whoever's got AA on our side and then choose not to engage. We need to be very selective how we choose to use our torpedo bombers. The just battleships, we can drop them, but again, we only have one and like uh, seven eighths of a wave. So we've practically just under two waves of torpedo bombers. We've got one wave of dive bombers with two spare, and we've got one wave of fighters with only three planes spare. So it's very, very limited. So I'm gonna do the fighter first, and then I'm gonna do the torpedo bombers, and then I'll do the dive bomber. If we attack with the torpedo bombers and we get some flooding and we wound a target, we can wait for the damage control party and we can watch our damage numbers in the top right. And then if those numbers don't uh, roll and then they stop, we know he's used damage control party with the flooding and then we can use the dive bomber, roll RNGs this a little bit, see if the dive bomber hits, gets a fire, and then we can get some sticky extra damage. Right? So that's we, there's no point using the uh, torpedo bombers and the dive bombers at the same time, unless, of course, we're really short in time, you know, there's enemy fire incoming or the AA is quite strong. Right. In numbers of destroyers, there's two destroyers each in a team, and it's space capture, so we don't expect the enemy CDs to be pushing out to, like, a capture mode and domination. So we're going to fly out, uh, but not put our bombing planes in a position where they can't escape. So, for example, I've seen his one fighter... I'm not going to bother trying to deal with it because I know I can't. If anything, I may actually move up north and if our friendly CV engages his fighter plane and then we latch onto it, we can punish his wave in, a, in sort of like a two versus one. And I think that's probably the best thing we can do. Uh, the Borgs want torpedo bomber, dive bomber, probably isn't going to kill anybody outright, so we don't really need to worry about that too much. Of course, he's bringing his fighter up. If he brings his fire up, we might bring our bombers back down south again. And if we bring our bombers down south again, we might be able to get in a, an attack if he's out of position. So, uh, it looks like our friendly carriers tried to do an attack. I'm not going to try and save the bomber, so totally wasteful. Both both fighters here, not a good idea. So there's a Svetlana. His fire's out of position. Wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up! No, he's tagged. I'm gonna watch that. Okay, so the Svetlana, we can go for that. And the, in case he turns away, I'll do that way, and I'll do that way. We'll keep the dive bomber back. My fighter is helping his fighter try and kill this, but if he gets down to two planes, I'm gonna leave. I'm leaving. I don't want him clicking on me. There's no point staying there, because we've lost that kind of engagement. Uh, and the Svetlana dodged the cross drop. Okay, well that was a waste. Probably should have gone after something like the Revolution, to be honest. Anyway, he's down three planes, which means he can probably do one full wave. We still have our planes left alive. Um, the dive bomber, what we could do is spot the Izokaze and keep him kind of lit up. We'll bring our fire down over here and just be patient. And we're going to have to get the TVs back. And we should have really probably gone for the revolution there instead. Uh, it just felt like we could get the cruiser out of the way and kind of help our guys because we've, we've now lost a cruiser here. There's no point spotting the Izokaze now because our Clemson's just so close. It's not going to help. Let's get some torpedo bombers out. Our bog now is going to be limited in that, look, he lost his whole fire wave, so he's only got three planes left over. All right? So, as a result, we know that the enemy carrier who lost three planes will now only have one wave uh, left over of six. None of them having, uh, I believe, dogfighting expert. Yeah, so they got six. Yeah, so he doesn't have... Uh, not deck fighting expert, sorry, air supremacy. Now this 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 one fighter can now bully him because um, actually the most of the team in the north is not doing particularly well. So yeah, that's that's great. This isn't gonna end very well. 
He's doing a good job of luring him over AA. I may actually try and get over there and give him a hand. Okay, we'll go for the revolution down the bottom. We'll move the dive bomber over here. Is it worth me clicking? Maybe. No, it's not. See how uh, I wasn't even fair trade there. He just absolutely wrecked the bombers. Now this revolution is going to keep hard turning. I know he's going to keep turning along the board and go along that way, right? That's 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 just the way he's going to go. So we're going to drop on the anticipation that he's going to drop turn that way. So we don't do it on top of each other. We'll do a little bit of crisp pattern. He's in a hard turn. He's now turning back into the border, so he might actually dodge some of these. We're going to keep the dive bomber... I see my, my friendly bolt's going to get wrecked, but that's because he, he didn't pay attention to his own fighter plane. So, two, because if he's hard turning, maybe three? No? Well, he got a flooding, right? So let's watch that number. He's still flooding. Maybe he used damage control earlier. I'm going to spot that destroyer. Still flooding. Right, cool. Fantastic. Looks like he might just flood out then. Or not. Nope. Flooding's gone. So we'll send the dive bomber in. Uh, now he might just die to everyone else. And if not, we'll make sure that happens. I don't want him healing up and escaping. So we can't alt attack. So we can only click on him. You see, it's for, for five planes, it's quite a large circle. If you didn't have air supremacy, that'd be four planes trying to drop in the circle. So RNG might just say, you're not going to hit anything today. We'll try and get the drop pattern as good as it possibly can be. Boom. We got some hits. So we were lucky. Uh, we should move down now. Because uh, this is quite getting a bit dangerous. And we're losing pretty badly. See this fighter here? I am not going to engage him. There's absolutely no benefit to me engaging him. What can I possibly lure him over? Maybe the Azuchi, maybe the Kalzrua, maybe they can do some damage to the plane. Hmm. It's not the greatest. Yeah, like, oh, that must be the Bogues all attack or something. He might survive this mail gate, and if he does survive, we'll, we'll torpedo bomb him and finish him off. The New York might get a favorable broadside, maybe. He might actually survive if he goes past and there's no shots on him, so we'll, we'll send our TBs here. The point is there's no fighters to mess with us yet. Yeah, let's see if we can get in there and save this New York. Watching the... Yeah, so we, we, got no, we got nothing we can do here. We need to drop this guy. Actually, pull that one back. That's enough to kill him, so we'll pull that guy back. Yep. There's no point fighting him with our fighter because uh, we can afford the torpedo bomber losses. We cannot afford the fighter plane losses because, again, we have no spare reserves. He is going to keep clicking on him. If the Ryan kills any planes, sure, fine, whatever, that's great. I don't know why battleships insist on pushing into torpedo winging ships seems really dumb uh, Ryan's not doing anything with his AA. Svetlana we could try and bomb we only got a single wave though we can't cross drop makes it much easier for ships to kind of avoid and dodge it's the same problem the American carriers suffer from we're gonna running into a situation here where we have no other option but to click on his fighters because we're running out of space. And if we do that, what can we go after? Maybe the Emerald? Mm, that's too far away. Yeah, it's going to have to be the Emerald. That's the closest thing. See if we can't get down to wow, this New York's full health all the way to the bottom border. Check that out. Let's go this way. Let's bring him down and put him along here. I mean, we are struggling here because they will outmuscle us. I can't go up north because of this fighter's here protecting the emerald, so they're pretty much on their own. 
my AA range is. Uh, hold on a second. Probably five right now. Boom! Now I can go along. Oh, we got another one. Check that out from the rear. Well, this is not great by any stretch of the imagination. Well, we're over the New York and we're over myself. This is where having AA might be useful. I'm going to try and engage the weaker of the two planes and actually call the planes back. All right. I'm going to engage this one with my AA and get right under it. Actually, I don't actually need to land them now because I know he's going after him. So our fighter's getting wrecked. We've saved our torpedo bombers. I'm right under this guy, and I'm turning away as well. You know what? I can take a single torpedo bomber hit. That's fine. I want to focus on the fires. Oh my goodness. Right. Pull him back. The reason I'm pulling him back is I want to kill this, this fighter plane. That's that's his last fighter plane. So if I can kill him off. Oh, he's going for me. We'll check that out. Well, we're going to kill our turn. We're going to turn in as best we can. Otherwise, we'll just get wrecked. Any other planes incoming on us? Oh, none that we see. So we need to put the flooding out. We'll keep the dive bomber around here. Ah, nuts. He may actually get a fire on us. Boom, tag him, clip him. We actually now need to click on this because the damage control party may end before he... Uh, this 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 cooldown may end before he bombs. If he bombs now, that's fine. It works in our favor to survive. Alright, he even clips one. Boom, right. So we're not on fire because of damage control. Just shh. Right, I need to click back on this again with my AA, and I need my fighter to panic that one. Otherwise, we're messed for. And on the assumption that we die, we click on whatever we can get our hands on. Oh, we'll drop it. Cross. Oh, the panic effect is there, but we may get a flooding here. Turn hard as we can into it. There is a panic effect. Ooh. Right. Oh my god, another dive bomber. Jesus. Well, if he gets fired here, I'm screwed because the, the, the damage control party, which I took off. Right, on the assumption he kills me, we'll click on the Wyoming. Okay, he gets a fire. He gets a single fire. That's going to burn a long time. We may actually die to this fire. We'll try what we can. He's turning in. See how he's turning in? So we anticipate the turn in. We're just going to have to do what we can. Because he knows he's going to get dropped. It's no fire planes to intercept us though. I'm actually going to keep this fire plane back. Watch my health. Oh, I'm getting shot at. Oh, no. I stopped the dive bomber from landing. So we got shot at. Okay, we, if we're lucky, we get three. Nope, we missed him there. And we lost the plane there. And he's already on a hard turn as well. We weren't able to manipulate, so we get two. We make it a little bit easier for our guy in the south to do something. No dive bombs, because I, I unclicked, waiting to see if I could get some flooding and then, you know, kind of bleed him out. But we were still spotted and we got killed off by battleship fire. I mean, that was that was a challenging game, to say the least. The damage you did to the Wyoming and the forcing turn meant our New York could kill him, though. But it's probably a little bit too late uh, on, on kind of base defense. Um, the problem with double carrier games is that you need to work really well with your friendly carrier. Our Bog, as an example, used his one fighter. He didn't pay attention. He let his fighter plane get tagged, and then he lost the fighter duel. Now, that may mean he didn't have the health upgrade. He might not have had the 10% damage upgrade from the ship modules. He may not have had air supremacy to have that extra seventh fighter plane in the air, or he could have just been inside hostile AA bubble of our ship, and that means it's a snowballing effect. Uh, and, and when you lose one plane, it's just, it's just a snowball, and then everything just dies. And I couldn't get over there to help him. Now he's down to three planes. The enemy group of five or six can muscle his three planes really easily. He can't defend himself. He can't go anywhere. He's quite um, useless. And now we are being bombed by two bulks. And in this particular instance, rather than taking torpedo armament expertise, had we taken basic fire training? I mean, let's say we had a 19 point captain and then we had the AFT and the manual fire. We would have killed off planes. We were killing planes off with our AA already. That would have been far more 
um, successful in helping us survive oncoming damage. And you see how our one fire plane survived two fighter engagements, and that's because we chose to fight right on top of ourselves so our close range and long range guns could hit them, and we were right next to the New York as well, so that the New York it, it also helped them. So the, the engagement was as favorable as it possibly could be, but we were still being double teamed by double bulk and then long range gunfire by somebody else. So, I mean, it's limited in what we can do and how we can do and how we can protect ships. Like we can we can panic enemy bombers, but ultimately if the bulk chooses to protect his bombers with his fire plane and you don't want to lose your fires, then you can't click on that fighter unless it's like heavy A on your side. So you are uh, limited in what the Zui Hill can do. You know, the bog is still stronger and it won't be until you get to tier seven where you get the second fighter plane on the hear you against the uh, ranger will you start to regain uh, air control in the skies. But for the time being, uh, it is what it is. Now, another option that you could have done is the dive bomber. You could have dropped the payload of the dive bomb to make the dive bomb even faster. And then you could have flown the dive bomber and tried to lure the fighters away. Like, hey, look at me, I'm a dive bomber. Why don't you come click on me? And then because they're faster than the fire planes, lure them away. Just lure them away from whatever you want to attack. And that allows you then to get a bombing a hit in. It's something I could have maybe done this game, but I didn't. Anyway. Ultimately, this game is over. Uh, the two bogs still have enough um, uh, strike capability. Our ships were not really in the greatest positioning, and we were kind of slightly outplayed. We, we held our own to an extent. I mean, we got 17 plane kills in a Japanese carrier versus American carriers. Uh, we managed to get two ship kills. Uh, you know, we got 35,000 damage. It's not a huge amount, but we got some important kills. But in this particular game mode, uh, you know, we couldn't make uh, the, the everything count. And that kind of to an extent is the problem with um, the removal of alt fire on tier 4-5. Each ship has an ability to carry, as in to, if your team isn't playing well, you can play really well and then you can turn a game around. You know, you, you can make your team win by saving somebody or killing somebody else, right? When you take away tools to do that, like if I could alt attack and I could be far more accurate, the Svetlana at the beginning would have died. So he wouldn't have been an issue for the rest of the game. And maybe some of these battleships would have taken more torpedo hits or the more flooding or there'll be more fire. Or with the strafe mechanic of the Zuiho, maybe I would have been able to catch uh, the bulk fighters that weren't paying attention. Now you might call that seal clubbing, you might call that skill, but at least it gives you tools to do in the Zuiho. Instead, we don't have those tools, so we have to play with what we've got. So the click engagement, and nothing happens. So anyway, I think this game is over, and we swapped about enough. So let's exit to port. Who knows? It's gonna be a loss. Can't win every game, and tier four or five is definitely tricky. That's for sure. But hopefully, this gives you an insight to what you can do in a situation where it's as bad as it can be. You are a Japanese carrier and you are against double American carriers. What do you do? You can maybe try and communicate with your co-partner carrier on your side, uh, but ultimately you need to choose when to engage your fighter planes, choose when to engage your torpedo bombers because you've got limited reserves. Uh, perhaps try and use your bomber in a scouting role, the dive bomber that is, by dropping the payload. Oh, you can't even do that. Sorry, I'm being an idiot. You can't alt attack to drop the bombs and the dive bomber to then go scout. You could, I guess, with the dive bomber click on any close target have it drop its bombs and then fly around, but that seems really tricky. You could like bomb the first thing you come across to drop the payload so the bombers would fly faster, but that's, 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 that's really bad stuff there. Anyway, I digress. Thank you for watching. This ends the Zuiho video. I hope it was informative, showing how I would set up the ship, how you might set up the ship, and how you would play in the worst case scenario. Um, if you haven't already seen the, the whole show game, Go check that out in the playlist. Otherwise, check in for next time where we're going to play the Ryujo and then move into Tier 6. Thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you next time. Goodbye.